I'm trying to think of a clever way to ask you to subscribe to this channel. If you like cars, watch this review, and if you like what you see, sign up, okay? Not clever, but, yeah, well. There's a lot of chatter about the electrification of the automobile and how it will help protect our environment. But what if there were more to it than that? What if electrification simply made the car more enjoyable? To that end, I give you the BMW 745e. It's a plug-in hybrid, so there's the best of both worlds. Smooth, silent electric oomph and a gas engine for anxiety-free cross-country travel. It'll take you from Indianapolis to Nashville on a full battery and a tank of gas, and it'll get you back the same day by just gassing up. No fuss, no muss, no charging. That would be 580 miles, a little geography lesson there. I'm on record that I really like plug-in hybrids. I own two of them myself, though they haven't really caught on with consumers. I feel they're a great way to dip your toe into the electric vehicle world. Not an awful lot of luxury car plug-ins. To name some, Lincoln has the Aviator Grand Touring, Porsche offers the Panamera and Cayenne, Land Rover has a couple, Volvo's got the S90 sedan and XC90 SUV. 745e is hardly BMW's first plug-in. This replaces the 740e. In addition to the i3, the X3 and 5 series get plug-in powertrains. Uh, sadly, the i8 is going away. I feel the Bavarian brand hasn't been recognized for all of the electrified models it's put out. The 745e gets its motivation from a 3-liter straight 6 that makes 280 horsepower on its own, but coupled with a 12 kilowatt hour electric motor, the total figure rises to 389 horses and 443 pound-feet of torque. Generally, Not much sound happens on startup because this is a hybrid after all. The system can be forced into an all-electric mode, throw it into sport, and the six-cylinder awakens straight away. I generally left it in automatic. 745e is all-wheel drive, with a shaft running to the back axle. Many hybrids use a continuously variable transmission. This one runs with an 8-speed, so there's none of that rubbery, elastic-y dynamic. I don't like joystick controllers, but I do appreciate having these on occasion to choose my own ratios. If you haven't heard, electric motors have great low-end torque off the line. That and all-wheel drive are very soul-satisfying. If the 12 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery is charged at all, the 745e pulls away using only the electric motor with 111 horsepower and 195 pound feet. That's with a lighter right foot. The smooth, silent performance is perfect for a luxury car. In automatic mode, drop the throttle hard and the gas engine spools up immediately since your right foot is telling the system it wants power right now. And even though the 745e weighs over 4,800 pounds, it does move off the line, zero to 60 happening in under five seconds and in a very relaxed manner. It works for me. 745e may be some 600 pounds porkier than the rear drive 740i, but it's 310 LBSs lighter than the 12 cylinder M760i. The EPA rates the all-electric range of the 745e at 16 miles, and this week it's on the cold, rainy side here in Seattle, so I'm seeing closer to 12. Uh, that is not going to impress anybody, but if you do the math and plug in every night, that's some 4,700 miles of all-electric range annually. Not too shabby if you're looking at the big picture. Wealthy people know that saving a little every day can add up over the years. There's your investment advice for today. And though this isn't a Prius, when it comes to fuel efficiency, it's good for a luxury sedan. The outgoing plug-in hybrid, the 740e, was EPA rated at an average of 27 miles per gallon. It was a four-cylinder engine. This one, the inline six, is EPA rated at an average of 22 miles per gallon. Obviously, not as efficient, but when it comes to being a luxury car, this one is much smoother. 
And once again, let's talk about the silkiness of the system. This drivetrain is ideal for a luxury car. When it comes to driving dynamics, the 7 does what it's supposed to do. It's a luxury car. It glides over potholes and bumps. It's very comfortable. It's very quiet. It's never sloppy. This is not a hard edge sports sedan. Sometimes I feel like BMW is a victim of its own marketing. For what it's worth, I'm pretty sure this could out hustle any of the standard Mercedes S classes in the corners. Not that 7 Series owners are looking to track their cars. All wheel steering is available. Once the battery is depleted, the 745e defaults to a regular hybrid mode. Unlike many of those, this one has a regular geared transmission, not a CVT. So in many ways, it feels like a regular car with a really good automatic engine start-stop system. The info screen shows what's happening with power flow. Just like any hybrid, coasting and braking charges up the battery. BMW engineers did an exceptional job of making the transition from regenerative to the physical brakes pretty much seamless. And like all BMWs, the transmission is calibrated perfectly. Voice command is not too shabby in this car. Hey BMW, is there a Starbucks nearby? What a softball question. Of course there's a Starbucks nearby. There's always a Starbucks nearby. I have found several destinations. Which one should I select? Which brings me to the cabin. It's a lovely place to spend time. Very different from an Audi A8, Genesis G90, Lexus LS, or Mercedes S-Class. Even with the rondelle covered, there's no doubt this is a BMW interior. I've seen less stitching in a bespoke suit. The wood finish is deeper than a forest, and yes, that is wireless charging for the phone. Pockets are softly lined, so nothing rattles. Luxuries include a heated wheel, seat that massage and are warmed and vented, I'm pretty sure any sized driver can get comfortable in here. I've covered the voice command aspect of the iDrive user interface. It's also touchscreen and gesture activated. Plus, there's always the familiar control system. You've heard the news, right? BMW, no longer charging annually for CarPlay. It's about time. Android Auto, that's still MIA. It will be available though in the middle of 2020. It and CarPlay are wireless, so there are no cords to clutter the interior. The Bowers & Wilkins Diamond Surround Sound System is rich and silky. I suggest getting it. Uh, you're already in for the cost of a 7 Series. And while listening to Moondance at night, enjoy the ambient lighting in your choice of colors. It's gorgeous. It makes me want to go out for a midnight snack. The Mickey D's drive-thru is open all night. Nope, Evil Twin is not going to be assessing the back seat because I told him to take the week off. Uh, I'm doing us a favor, he would geek out for hours about this space. It is very roomy, of course it is, it's a 7 Series. Plus, it's got the luxury seat package, and so for starters, there are reclining and massaging back seats. That's pretty nice. Those riding back here have full control of the navigation and audio system, so don't let the kids know that. A climate zone? Of course. And the seats are heated and vented. If you see that you're having a bad hair day, the paparazzi can be kept at bay, at least a little bit. Things can be charged, and there's a slot for DVDs here, too. You'd have to be abnormally large and tall to feel even remotely cramped in the back seat. But because the drive shaft bump is substantial, it forces the feet of the center rider to impinge on the outboard passengers, though realistically, very few owners fill every seat in a car on a regular basis. If you often carry large amounts of cargo, this might not be the big BMW to do it in, maybe an X7. Because of the battery, trunk space drops by three and a half cubic feet from the base 7 Series. The adjustable load floor shows the 745e is at least trying. No spare tire, BMW loves its run flats. Seats don't fold, you won't be hauling large long things, but those in this income bracket can afford to have things delivered. Pessimistically, I was only going to bring out four packs of the 2-ply, but the 745i surprised me, glad I brought out five. And let me just say the tailgate of the X7 would be giving me shelter from the rain right now.
The 745e begins its price spiral at $96,500. Uh, surprisingly for a BMW, most of the metallic paints are no extra charge. Upgrade to those fancier seats, adaptive cruise control, the best adaptive headlamps you can get in the US, the Bowers & Wilkins sound, and a glass roof, and this one bumps up closer to 118 grand. This might seem around $6,000 more than the non-hybrid 740i xDrive model, but really it's a wash because of the 745e's $5,800 federal tax credit. This plug-in hybrid is a smooth operator. The neighbors might simply think you're doing your part to burn less fuel. Let them. You don't have to tell them. It's a pretty hedonistic choice, too. If you don't know, the two plug-ins that I own are a 2014 Cadillac ELR and a second-generation Chevy Volt. The Caddy is over four years old. The Chevy just had its first birthday. Both have been flawless. I buy uh, a tank of gas or so a year, my wife two or three, because generally speaking, most of our daily driving is under 35 miles or so. Plug-ins rock. It's a shame those two aren't made anymore. Like many vehicles today, the 7 here comes with a lot of active electronic safety tech. I didn't get into it because, well, to be honest, it's hard to shoot. But I can tell you this, the lane keeping assist works quite well on the highway, smoothly taking gentle turns all by itself while not fighting the driver on the straights. This is an expensive vehicle, and the automatic emergency braking and blind spot warning are a cut above what you'll find in most affordable brands. You'd know this if you took one out for an hour or so. So uh, there's a reason why these things cost more than a Honda Accord, people. Hope you learned something about the BMW 745e or plug-in hybrids. Again, I'm a big fan. You get to live the electric car lifestyle. And then at the drop of a hat, you can drive to Tampa Bay, Florida without recharging. Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> A reminder, click subscribe and then notifications if you like these videos, and you can catch me on Twitter. I'm very active there, okay? So sign up. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.